on Mary Wollstone's crafts. <laughs> and uh, and the and uh, regarding the 18th century's background so hopefully every learners would be able to acquire knowledge regarding this topic and i would request ms swetha ma'am to kindly start the session Hello. thank you ma'am it yeah am i audible to you ma'am you am i audible yeah yeah you are you are audible Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? We can. Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Very much audible. I think she is not getting her voice. Hello, ma'am. Swetha, ma'am. Can you hear us? your voice is not audible but ma'am but your voice is very much audible to us oh ho okay 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 thank you so much so i would be starting as i had told that in 18th century i discussed about the his uh, brief background and the social status of uh, the society and we had discussed about the social background the historical background in my last class i was left with some uh, major writers and their works so the first part of the class would be dedicated to the 18th century major writers now before i start with the slides let me tell you that 18th century as far as literature was concerned you will find that there were uh, you know many works of biography history philosophy politics economics literary criticism aesthetics as well as natural history and during this point of time these were the areas which received or we can say achieved the level of literature there were many writers those who strove for a style not merely clear and accurate but also eloquent and persuasive so you will find that 18th century literature had a lot many you know it 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 dominated almost all the genres whether it was poetry whether it was prose whether it was different forms of writing so the techniques and the styles the devices that were used by different writers and authors they were really worth uh, worth reading so i will start with the most important part or genre of 18th century that was 18th century poetry so the poetry form was dominated by the satire satire basically you will find that uh, 18th century can be termed as an age of satire so satiric form was used in different poetries the poets used satire in order to talk about the realities of the society when they wanted to talk about the harsh realities of society they used this form of literary device that was the satiric form along with the satiric form you will also find the 18th century poetry having the heroic couplets so this are the two main uh, areas that we need to understand uh, poetry generally it valued the general okay it was for the common mass that is very important over the particular it did not particularize something or it did not particularize certain things rather in a general sense it talked about some of the prominent poets that were there in the 18th century were jonathan swift alexander pope and thomas gray there were many others but i have tried to pick up the important ones because it is not possible to tell you the name of the of all the 
poets that were present in the 18th century. So I have picked up some prominent poets of the period. Thomas Gray, when we talk about Thomas Gray, his well-known poetry was elegy written in country churchyard. And he was a part of the graveyard school of poetry. This is a new term that you should know. Whenever we talk about the 18th century poetry, we have to talk about the graveyard school of poetry. Now, the name itself suggests that graveyard, when we talk about graveyard, it is basically referred to the death, you know, of the people. So it is generally related to this. And Jonathan, uh, we, the other major writers during that period were Jonathan Swift. The poem was Verses on the Death of Dr. Swift. It was written in the year or published in the year 1731. And it is it can be a best example of satirical poem. Apart from Jonathan Swift, we have Alexander Pope. And the most famous work of Alexander Pope is The Rape of the Lock which was published in the year 1712. Then I have already talked about Thomas Gray and Elegy written in a country churchyard. This, these were some major writers and their works. Next slide, please. Now, 18th century prose. Basically, when we talk about the 18th century, we talk about the novels because novels were the genre which were very, very popular during the 18th century. And we can't go away with I have already told you about the different genres in my last class. So today's class is only focused on the major writers. So when we talk about the prose, Samuel Richardson was one of the most famous personality. And his book, his major work, novel that he had written was Pamela or Virtue Rewarded. Apart from Samuel Richardson, we have Henry Fielding. And Henry Fielding famous work was Joseph Andrews, published in 1742, Tom Jones, published in 1749, and Emilia, published in 1751, to name a few. There are many other novels that he has written, but I have picked up the major ones. Then we have Lawrence Stern. Lawrence Stern's Tristan Shandy, that's the most famous novel that he has written. It was published in the year 1760. So these are some of the major prose writers of the period. Next slide, please. Now, apart from the major writers, I would also like to tell you about the rise of women writers, which I have not mentioned in the slide. But I would like to tell you in details about these women writers. See, as we all know, that the role of women in the 18th century was considered to be very, very less important. You will consider the women we see, when we see a woman, when we talk about a woman, we find her only taking care of the household work. She was not given a prominent pay place in the society that we all know about the 18th century, which I had discussed. So during such a genre, which was a patriarchal society, there were some women writers who did fantastically well in the field of literature. And their writings were recognized. That means they were at par with the male writers. So the rise of women writers during this period you will find that enlightenment idols weren't the exclusive property of men. Women 
especially the upper class women were equally interested in exercising their reason and learning about the world around them you will find that there were so many universities during this point of time that is during the 18th century and but the women were not allowed to educate themselves so with so much of restrictions how could a woman flourish in the field of literature that was a major question that we need to there are some women writers who broke those clutches and they came out as successful women writers so you will find that the women were unable to go out and participate in the intellectual discussions so what did they do the several enterprising women in the mid 1700s they decided to bring into their own homes in the form of french style private gatherings because they were not allowed to move out of the house so instead what they did they brought this into their own homes and it was specifically known as salons s a l o n s this is very important that we all should know and salons it quickly became a popular form of evening entertainment taking the place of card games as well as it was attended by well known writers and other public figures some of the well known writers who attended the salons were samuel ja johnson and horace walpole because guests were invited okay to leave their silk stockings at home that means women during the 18th century they generally wore the silk stockings but when they were invited to these meetings to these gatherings they were invited with their casual dress and they what was that it was in every day blue worsted stockings and the women who frequented such salons and intellectual women in general they became known as blue stockings okay please mark these words blue stockings b l u e s t o c k i n g s blue stockings these are very important that we must know so some of the women writers those who came up during this period were shallow smith she wrote in order to support her family beginning with poetry but she soon turned to novels then you find fanny burney's novels on the other hand they were quite sentimental and moralistic then we cannot do away with mary wollstonecraft to who was another one of the main writers women writers of the period she was known because she openly challenged the status quo of men she wanted that men and women should be given an equal status in the society she challenged everyone and the most famous uh, writing of hers was a vindication of the rights of women which was published in 1792 in this she argued that women should be educated equally with men and allowed to join the professions so that the relationship between men and women could be one this is very important thing that i wanted to tell you in brief women writing the rise of women writers during the 18th century apart from this there were some other genres that really were successful and it was none other than the gothic novels the gothic novels 
they made its present felt in the 18th century this particular term gothic it came from the germanic tribe that is the goths they were the germanic tribes and it was used to connote to talk about the medieval world in general so what is the main characteristic of a gothic novel it is basically characterized by a general mood of decay in a negative sense decay degeneration okay decay can be in in terms of drama in terms of drama that is dramatic terms it is violent in its style or you will find many disturbing actions in the particular novels which were gothic and the settings are gloomy these are some of the general characteristics of gothic novels now let us see who are the writers those who wrote the gothic or those who adopted the gothic style the major writers were horace walpole and the gothic elements you will find in his novel the castle of otranto which was published in the year 1764 apart from horace walpole we have clara ree and the novel was the english the old english baron which was published in the year 1778 we have william beckford his famous novel gothic 1786 and anne redcliff and the novel that she wrote was the mysteries of judolfo which was published in the year 1794 next slide please so see these were some of uh, what i have tried to do is you will find there are many minor poets minor novelists during this period but i have tried to gather information on some of the major writers of the period and i have tried to tell you the details in this class you will find that this particular 18th century was also known as the age of johnson that means the second half of the 18th century okay you call it as the age of johnson which was a tribute to samuel johnson so he was not only samuel johnson was not only a poet a critic he was a journalist essayist scholar and lexicographer but he was also a talker he was he was an orator and you will find that he enjoyed holding a lot of participation at coffee houses clubs and parties he, he was was friends with many of the greatest literary and artistic talents of the time and you will find that some of the biographers like james boss Ma'am, you are not audible. Ma'am, your voice is not coming.
Yes, she will be joining us shortly. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. You are very much audible to us. Hello, ma'am. You are audible. Yes. Yeah, you are audible. Yes, ma'am. Can ma you tell me where I stopped? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, you were just giving the introduction of the vindication of the rights of women. Ah, uh -huh. no, I had. Okay, okay. Yeah, I had like hmm. Hello. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, uh, as I was telling you about the the, the main famous, um, you know, women writer that was Mary Wollstonecraft, and I think uh, you were able to even hear me when I told you about the age of Johnson. Eva, did, did you listen to that when I was talking about the age of Johnson? Yes, ma'am. I was listening. And that was the last part. You were able to listen about the age of Johnson, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Recalled. Okay, okay, okay fine. So uh, that's how when we talk about the literature of this age, there were many famous writers. There were poets of this age. Uh, who really have done wonderfully during this point of time. Now, today I will start with a very important work of Mary Wollstonecraft that is a vindication of the rights of men. Now, can we have the next slide, please? Mary Wollstonecraft, she was an English writer, philosopher, and advocate of women's right. This is very important point that we have to understand about Mary Wollstonecraft. Because that's how we would be relating our topic today. She promotes basically two important things. One is children and the other one is women education. That means she focuses on education of both children and women. Because during 18th century, the children and women, most of mostly women, they were deprived of education. There were so many universities, but the women of the society were not allowed to join colleges and different universities. So uh, that is what she always promoted. She wanted that women should be educated as well as the children of the society should be educated. She wrote many novels, travel narratives, treatises, and history of the French Revolution. She argues that women are not naturally inferior to men. Now, when we say naturally inferior to men, what do we understand by this term? We have to understand it very deeply. Now, see, when God made the two genders, that is men and women, he did not discriminate between the two. Only there were certain discriminations in terms of the biological difference that you find in a man and a woman. That's a different thing. But the differences that we created in terms of the intellectual of a woman, the norms of a woman, how a woman should behave in a certain environment was formed by whom? It was formed by none other than the men. 
the patriarchal society was responsible for framing a certain you know a picture of a woman that how a woman should be so she argues that women are not naturally inferior to men it is the men who have been trying to make women or call women as a weaker sex that's how she argues in most of her writings she suggests a very important thing that both men and women should be treated as rational beings they should be given the equal opportunities in every field of life she should be treated equally in the society irrespective of her status in the society it is irrespective of the role that she is playing in the society she should be given equal rights as far as the patriarchal society is concerned that was her main point of argument in this next slide please she her childhood we have to understand her childhood very thoroughly why because when you find when you read most of her writings the traumatic experiences that she had faced or experienced during her childhood can be reflected in her writing she did not have a very good childhood because she grew up with a lot of financial constraints her family was not the so called happy family that we call there used to be a lot of disagreements and fights between her parents okay and her childhood was in fact in a very in a very low kind of phase that she has she seen in her childhood it was not a very happy she struggled a lot during her childhood so in spite of all these constraints in spite of all these diversities she still was able to educate herself because she had a lot of interest in reading you know she got an opportunity to read and she was able to educate herself to reading and learning on her own she was the mother of mary wollstone craft that was the author of frankenstein that is mary shelley she was the wife of pb shelley as we all know and wollstone craft is considered to be one of the first feminist because she was the mother of western feminism now when we talk about the feminist concept we have to understand certain things which are related to feminism okay next slide please these are some of the famous books that she has written oh, like uh, the today's topic that we are going to dis discuss is the vindication of the right of men the vindication of the rights of women thoughts on the education of daughters maria or the wrongs of women letter written in sweden norway and denmark these were some of her books that she had written now historical background as to what made her write these kinds of right especially when we are talking about the vindication to the rights of men what do we understand by the term vindication that is the first point to be noted vindication is when it's an action of clearing someone of blame or 
suspicion when you want to clear out someone of some kind of blame or suspicion then we call it as an indication when you want to prove that someone is right or when you want to prove that someone is reasonable or when you want to prove that someone is justified then we call it as a vindication so the vindication of the rights of women the main background when she wrote this was the french revolution the french revolution it was a period of social and political upheaval in france and its colonies which began in 1709 1709 and it ended in 1799 1799 so this was the political turmoil that took place during the french revolution during this period beginning in 1709 and ending in 1799 that took place in the social as well as the political scene this revolution overthrew the monarchy what have exactly happened we have to understand this this is very important so what exactly happened during the french revolution during this revolution it overthrew the monarchy and it established a republic republicanism came into existence during the french revolution and it catalyzed violent periods of political turmoil and finally culminated in a dictatorship this is what exactly happened during the french revolution now when i used the term republic what do we mean by republic it is basically a form of government in which the country is considered as a public matter mark my word the country is considered as what as a public matter and not the private property of a ruler that was done just before the french revolution it was basically the monarchy but when the french revolution came it overthrew the monarchy and it established a republic so republicanism gave more importance to the public to the people of its country okay not that the country is a private property of a ruler it totally was against it so during this uh, you will find that there were a lot of texts and writings that appeared in response to the violence and political upheaval that took place during the french revolution and the vindication to the rights of men is one of such texts which was in fact a kind of response to another famous writer that was edmund brooks writing i will give you the details in the next slide where she has written it in response to edmund brooks major so the most and notable and compelling writers of this particular period were edmund brooke thomas paine and mary wollstonecraft look at the place where mary wollstonecraft got a place along with the writers like edmund brooke and thomas paine so mary wollstonecraft was a notable writer now coming to her writings as i have already told you she has published many books apart from that the major and the most popular text that she had written was a vindication of the rights of men and a vindication of the rights of women which was published in 1789 
1790 and 1792 respectively they were a justification and defense of natural human rights with a unique set of revelations regarding the education of women and their role in society so she talked about the human rights the natural human rights which as a woman she should have which she is deprived of in a society she want to defend it and she has also justified it to her and she has also given a lot of importance to the education of women this is what it is all about next slide please now as today's topic is a vindication of the rights of men i would be focusing on the major points see i want you all to read the whole of this particular writing that is the vindication of the rights of men okay what i have done in today's class is i have picked out the most important points that she has discussed in this particular writing so this vindication of the rights of men she had written it in response to groups reflections on the revolution of right this was in direct response that means when group had written this particular writing that is reflections on the revolution of writing she wrote the vindication of the rights of women after that because it was in response to group's reflection Mary Wollstonecraft had penned a vindication of the rights of men. She criticizes Brooke in this particular writing, especially for his sympathy towards aristocratic women in France, while many other mothers who are poor, hungry. and without property of their own they were tremendously suffering she believed that brook is showing his sympathy towards the aristocratic class of society he is favoring the women belonging to the aristocratic class in france so she criticizes brook for this she says that being a writer he should focus on the reality and who is the reality who shows us the real picture of the society it is not the aristocratic class it is the lower strata of the society who is the mirror of the society they are the one who talks about or who tells about the main the what the society is all about so we have to see who they are because they were the ones there are many women there are many mothers those who are poor those who are hungry and they are without any property and they are suffering their suffering is endless they are the continuous sufferers next slide please she also disapproves of brooks justification of the unequal society that promotes the passivity of women by relying on tradition and custom so what he said that he but what she said was that rook is promoting the passivity of women 
he doesn't want the women to come out from the household chorus the daily work that she needs to do okay she has to come out from that particular role that was given to her from ages and centuries she has to change her society she has to change her status in the society so she should be given an opportunity if you don't give an opportunity to a woman how will she come out how will she show her intellectual that is the question she questions not only to group but to the whole of the society and she criticizes group okay she criticizes she questions group's idea of society and equality what he talks about in reflections about the society and equality she questions it she says what you are saying is not correct because she believed that people could only become office holders through a privilege that is given to them when you give them certain opportunities then only they will be able to break those tradition and come out of it okay so the passivity of women that was reflected in that she he, she really did not like it her ideas about revolution inferred that there were groups what does revolution mean to her she felt that there were certain groups in the society and she is basically focusing on the group that is what what is that group it is women who were left entirely out of equation forget about being a part they were not even considered to be a part of society because they were not given any importance okay they were left out they were ignored they were considered to be the passive member of the society they were not allowed to actively participate in different activities so she really believed that something has to be done the status of women in the society needs to be changed that's what she said and she defended the working class women struggling to survive what are the working class women doing they are struggling to survive and she argues that had they been given the same opportunities for education and position this is a very important thing that she has talked about please see to it she argues that had they been given the same opportunities for education and position within society they would have behaved differently when you see a women behaving in a certain way it is not their fault because they are determined they are they have no other choice they are not given any other choice but to behave in a certain way so if they would get the same kind of opportunities that men get in the society the same opportunities in terms of education in terms of position that she held in the society then definitely she would behave she would behave in a different manner that is what she said and specially she defends the working class women in this particular field next slide please now another important thing she argues that the political traditions 
have no authority to confer or deny rights okay the political traditions they do not have any right to confer or deny the rights that are given to different class of the society she argues that the political traditions have no authority okay she believe what she believe that the people can get the privilege especially in the society through what when they are given certain power certain rights so they have no authority to confer hello ha huh? am i disconnected again oh are are acha 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 i think there is some problem because here i don't know it shows connected where did i uh, end in which slide acha acha i think uh, in the same slide i got disconnected no oh oh acha acha let me let me check now please check if my voice is coming amit sir is there yes ma'am yes ma'am your voice is coming ma'am acha sir am i audible amit sir yes yes ma'am uh, did i get disconnected uh, no ma'am actually hiba ma'am have got disconnected oh <laughs> i thought i got disconnected no ma'am so please tell me when i get disconnected okay yes ma'am yes ma'am i'll call you ma'am okay okay thank you thank you sir all right so she basically argues that the political traditions have no authority to confer or deny rights and she believed in progress this is very important thing about mary bulstone craft what she says she believed in progress and how can somebody progress she says that the past is a scene of superstition oppression and ignorance so we have to come out of that past if we really want to progress if we really want to develop if we really want to grow as an individual we have to forget the past which is full of superstition which is full of oppression oppression means what oppression means the the rich dominating the poor the rich trying to suppress the poor that is oppression ignorance what do we mean by ignorance when you are unaware of something when you are not allowed to be educated you became you become ignorant so she says that if you really want to progress if you really want to develop then you have to forget the past which is full of superstition oppression and ignorance we have to shed away these things from our lives in order to develop in order to grow in order to progress she also argues for rationality rational thinking she was a believer in that pointing out that brute system would lead to the continuation of slavery what brute has talked about in reflections if we follow that then we will continue with what we are doing till this there will be no changes in the society she wanted to bring in changes in the society okay so if we follow brute system it would lead to what it would lead to the continuation of slavery simply why 
because it had been an ancestral tradition the tradition that is being followed by us through our ancestors even we are following that even he is asking us to follow the same ancestral tradition then in that case what will happen we will continue with the slavery we will continue with the being a slave we will not be able to come out of it right so she argues for rationality another important thing that she says is she contends that people should be judged on their merits rather than on their birth rights a very important point which we should try to understand what she is telling when she is talking about birth rights now see we have seen especially in the monarchy what happens the king's son again becomes the king that is a hierarchical shifting of power okay now in this case what happens people are not judged on the basis of merits only those who are in power those who have that power with their birth will be given the opportunity then what about others the others will always be deprived of this they will never be given an opportunity they will never get a chance in their lives so what he wants to tell us what she wants to goldstone craft wants to tell us is that that people could only become office holders through a position of privilege or through the influence of someone in a position of power this would lead to a corrupted society in which people held a position or power because of their birth or relationship so because you are the son of a king you will again become a king so what will happen there this particular thing can lead to a corrupted society our, our society will encounter with a lot of corruption in this way because the people those who are having the power and authority may misuse it they may not use it in the right direction so in turn it is hampering whom it is hampering the common mass it is hampering the society so she is strictly against this then so what she does that's why there was a term in the previous slide which said based on merits so people should be judged based on what they should be judged based on their merits they should be judged based on their capabilities they should be judged based on their abilities not on the basis of their birth rights i hope i am clear next slide please so what she does she emphasizes she gives a lot of importance to hard work self discipline frugality morality and values these are some of the most important characteristic that a human should possess what is it they should have the hard work they should have the ability to do the hard work because there are lot lot of benefits of hard work hard work leads to success she wants people to be self disciplined that's very important if you want things to be disciplined 
if you want your environment to be disciplined first you should discipline whom others no you have to first discipline yourself you have to first incorporate the norms into yourself you have to become self disciplined to make others disciplined that's very important factor then you should have the morality what is right what is wrong you should have the ability to know that and the values the beliefs that you imbibe within yourself when you are at your home or when you are educating yourself what kind of values you you have incorporated in your values indirectly influences the society okay so these are few important characteristics that she emphasizes upon next she says she gives a lot of importance to to the virtue okay she says she maintains that virtue is at the core of citizenship what do we mean by this her notion of virtue is more individualistic virtue is a characteristic that individuals should possess if you are virtuous what you will do you will make your society virtue okay your society will be influenced by your virtues this very important point that she is focusing on she wants to tell us the virtue is at the core of citizenship if we want to become a we we, we want to become a good citizen of our country we have to first become a good person a country is not country by itself a country is is made by its people so the people those who are, those who live in a country are responsible for the growth and development of a country or a society so we she focuses on the individualistic notion of virtue than and moralistic than traditional ideology she feels that virtue begins in the home very important point okay we where do we learn to become to be virtuous not from anywhere else but we learn it from our home it begins in the home okay private virtues are the foundation for public virtues so when you when you become virtuous as as an individual you will be able to make your society fill with virtues you will support virtue and you will make your environment virtuous so private virtues are the foundation for public virtues and where do we learn to be to be uh, to be virtuous it begins in our own home that is what she focuses next slide please next slide please sir this is a slide ma'am hello ma'am so tama
मैम यू आर नॉट एट ऑल ऑडिबल मैम मैम यू नॉट माय ऑडिबल राइट नाउ योर ऑडिबल फॉर वन और टू मिनट्स बैक यू वर नॉट ऑडिबल मैम ओ हो नाउ एम आई ऑडिबल यस मैम यस मैम ओके सो शी एसर्ट्स दैट पीपल शुड स्ट्राइव टू इमिटेट गॉड शी गिव्स अ लॉट ऑफ इंपोर्टेंस टू रिलिजन because she feels that the basis of a human personality is religion how you behave what are your beliefs what are your values it cannot be separated from the religion religion is a part and partial of our life so she believes that one should strive to imitate god by practicing universal benevolence a very 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 important thing that she has said within this society with this only society would develop as an individual of equal individuals with similar opportunities and aim what do we mean by universal benevolence we should consider everyone to be equal and this thing we should learn from our own religion that god is one no matter whichever color creed caste religion we may be what is important here is god we should imitate god god doesn't discriminate among people it is we who discriminates so we should strive to imitate god we should always learn how god practices universal benevolence when he shares the sunlight upon us you know when you have the sunlight the, does god discriminate that it should be shown only on the rich and not on the poor no so god doesn't make any discrimination we should learn this thing from god we should learn this thing from religion and when we learn this particular aspect from god we will be able to develop a society where we will find every individual to be equal and with equal opportunities and equal aim similar opportunities and similar aims. so she rejects groups gendered definitions where in reflections he has basically talked about he associates the beautiful with the weakness and femininity when something is beautiful he has referred to it as something which is feminine something which is weak he considered women to be a weaker sex than men and the sublime with strength and masculinity so she rejects this concept of brute she said that this is the gendered discrimination this is a discrimination based on what a discrimination based on gender so she rejects this notion of and she says that no sex can should be considered as a weaker sex next slide please so towards the end i would like to conclude that gulstone craft believed education so what was the solution to all these problems that she has talked about she says she believed that education is the key to social reform if we want to develop as a nation as a society 
we need to educate ourselves so education was the key to social reform she wanted people to act with an understanding of virtue you should always try to act virtue virtuous and be able to govern their own actions you should be able to be responsible for your own actions you should be capable of doing that and be a part of a democratic society she was in favor of the democratic society then only we will be able to make this world a better place to live in when we take the ownership that yes the country belongs to me the society belongs to me i am responsible for it. i should be questioned if something goes wrong i i am responsible for the right and wrong that happens in the society the moment we develop this feeling the whole nation will be a wonderful place the whole world in fact she viewed religion as an integral part of social and political relations religion she gave a lot of importance and emphasis to this not just as a way to continue political stability when we want to have certain uh, you know stability certain balance in our society we need to take up religion and she and she her understanding of the effects of social inequality and relationships of dominance and subordination were an integral part of her social vision and this understanding colors her published work so these are some of the beautiful key points that one should always remember about mary wollstone thank you so much i hope you all have understood heba yes i'm done with it ha ah, yeah i was listening so uh, i would request bharati kharsel as you have attended the session mm -hmm. so you can directly interact with the resource person uh, regarding your questions or your views on the topic it's a quite interactive session yes. so please do interact with the resource person bharti okay, bharti if you have any doubt you can ask me she has left the meeting don't <laughs> 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 students to ask questions they leave the meeting <laughs> <laughs> this is the beauty of online session right <laughs> okay thank you ma'am sir for such a wonderful uh, lecture on uh, on the women vindication of the rights of women and uh, taking into account the feminist aspects of how women used to celebrate and give voice to the voiceless so and being a women yes. writer she herself try to come to the yeah from forefront speaking this topic so it was really a very insightful yeah. session and uh, we benefited a lot from this session and we learned a lot so we are looking forward for more such sessions with yeah. you ma'am so you will join us oh yeah thank you ma'am thank, thank you, you uh, thank you for uh, yeah, thank you thank you so yeah thanks to the technical team as well thank you amit sir and thanks to one and all